Welcome to HowStreet.com video channel. Tom Jeffries is with you We're at the beautiful Sutton Place Hotel here in Vancouver, British Columbia. Every week on HowStreet.com, we're very privileged to have the Honorable Garth Turner drop in every Monday to talk about macroeconomics, housing, basically what the heck is going on. We welcome Garth to the West Coast. It's finally good to meet you face to face. Nice to meet you, my friend. Let's talk housing. I guess that's the number one topic everybody's got on the top of their mind. You've got a book out called After the Crash. Are we in the crash? Where are we in the mix <laughs> right now? Well, the crash in my book refers to the cataclysmic event that happened last autumn, which was the meltdown in the financial markets. Yeah. So that is behind us. I don't think we're going to see any more meltdowns of that proportion. Yeah. However, the markets will bounce up and down. Yeah. But what has still a lot of momentum on the downside is real estate. And I think even in the U.S. where people think, yeah, we're in year number four, it's got to end at some point. I think they've got at least a year to go. Here in Canada, we've just scratched the surface. Mm. So I believe that there's downward momentum that's going to take us through the recovery. When I say that, it sounds strange. The recovery will come in stages. Stage one is going to be the equity markets. Stage two, the economy is actually going to start to grow. Stage three is going to be the real estate recovery, and that is going to take like five years past the equity recovery. So we have a lot of pain yet to go. So my advice to people, if you need to sell your home and you're depressed that the markets are low, you'll be way more depressed two years than you are now. So you should sell it. And if you want to buy, you want to be a good little vulture, wait. Like, let's talk about those people out there with maybe a few bucks. Would you go out and buy right now or is this a good time for renters? Oh, it's a great time for renters because rents are actually going down. There's more units coming onto the market. As people cannot sell their homes, um, they become reluctant landlords. And those reluctant landlords actually force the value of, of rents to go down. So it is a great time to conserve your cash. It's a very good time to uh, not be in the market because you will see better deals going forward. I know people get all excited when they see the market go down by 15%. They get all excited when some condo builder who can't flog his overpriced units puts them on sale for 20% off. Give me a break. That's 20% of the 50% yet to come. Would you, if you were an investor out there, be putting money down in a condo that's going to be completed in the west side of Vancouver, say at old 2012? <laughs> this is a joke, right? Uh, no, yeah, that's what some people are doing that. Next question. Yeah, I think you answered that succinctly. <laughs> Let's get to uh, what's happening. Greater fool is the expression you, in your best-selling book. Greater fool means what? Well, a lot of people make money only because they buy assets at such a price. The only way they can ever make money is a fool greater than themselves comes along and says, I'll take it. And that's yeah. the only way. So it's a theory not only in real estate, but in the equity market and anywhere else. I'm sure it happened with, you know, trading colorful beads uh, from Captain Cook. Mm. So uh, it's gone way back. But greater fool really is a way to make money in a market that's rising from somebody who just got off the road. Tell us the story you told me in one of our interviews in House Street when you spoke at the NAR down in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh -huh. Tell us the story. Yeah, well, that was interesting. I was invited to speak to this giant convention of realtors uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, when was that? Uh, end of October. Mm -hmm. So we were right in the middle of the meltdown. And I was talking away about you know how the markets had gone down, what had caused that, and what people should expect. And part of my presentation, I flashed up a house for sale in Vancouver. It was like a little crappy house, you know, one and a half story, 35 foot lot, you know, looked like it was made out of varnished particle board. $929,000 was a current listing on it. And I flashed this up on the screen and the place just disintegrated into giggles and guffaws because people from right across the continent could not believe anyone in the right mind would pay probably $249 as opposed to $949 for a, bung for a place like that. We've heard this over and over again for the last couple of years. The Olympics are coming. The Olympics mm. are coming. Yeah. What kind of impact is that going to have on the market? It's already had an impact and it's been negative. When the Olympics were announced, it actually added about 10 or 12 percent to the price of homes in Vancouver. That took it up to, that was the zenith, right? Right after the announcement. The price of a single family home in Vancouver went up to a bungalow, 938000 The average home price, 772 The average income in Vancouver still is hovering around Eighty-five to a hundred thousand dollars, so it hasn't moved. The, that was the icing on the cake that really put it over the top, and I think started this decline, this inevitable decline. So it's been bad news, and I think at the end of the day, people are going to regret the Olympics ever came here because the debt of the city has gone up. The province had to pass a new act just to let the city get into debt, and uh, of course, you're going to have a way, an overabundance of accommodation here. 
The United States taxpayer is getting dinged by the day with bailouts, bailouts, bailouts. Mm -hmm. Canada's taxpayer as well. What do you make of all this bailout mania? I think it's the only hope right now. Uh, unfortunately, we're in a society today where capitalism has basically failed, at least in the short term. Government has had to move in, clean it up, and provide the stimulus capital. I don't like to see it any more than the next guy because this is going to breed hyperinflation somewhere down the road. It's going to start out with modest inflation, but maybe quite some period of time down the road, we could get into a very worrisome situation. Interest rates have nowhere to go but up. And just by the way, you think about all these people right now who are out there buying houses with cheap mortgages, right? Not Thinking, sure. man, this is a, I'm so smart. I'm getting a mortgage at 3%. Yeah. Well, guess what, folks? When that mortgage comes up for renewal the next time in five years, it's going to be at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11%. Monthly payments will double. So I sure hope people's incomes double. So we're into a situation now where these bailouts will have long-term consequences, but in the short term, sadly, there's no alternative. Variable rate or lock in a mortgage? Ha! Huh. Yeah, that's a big debate. Well, my own view is that you should always be variable. Why so? Well, because if you can afford to pay more than you're paying now, then put it towards the mortgage principal. This is not about a you know, being clever and getting the lowest locked in interest rate. This is about getting rid of that sucker debt as fast as you possibly right. can. So you should pay it off. And I know interest rates will go up in the future, but if you have a variable rate mortgage, you have plenty of time to lock in. You will know clearly when interest rates start to rise by that first quarter point, you can make a decision as to whether you're going to lock in. Right now, they're going down, not up. I wouldn't get touching a fixed term uh, mortgage at all. What about uh, the book that you've got coming out? We don't want to give it away, but it's called Sheeple. It'll mm. be an inside look at uh, Stephen Harper's Ottawa. Can you give us a glimpse at uh, what we're going to see in the new book? Well, um, yeah, this is uh, kind of my uh, record of what happened to me uh, in Parliament. And it's more than me, though. It's sort of about a clash between the old school and the new school. I believe this is the new age of communications, right? This, this is this web-based videography, uh, blogging, uh, interactive web websites. This is the way politics will evolve. O Obama gets it, right? Clinton got it. These guys know what the future is, but in Canada, we're still ruled by the backroom boys. So my experience was trying to bring this technology to Parliament, and I got my ass kicked as a result. So uh, Mr. Harper is not a fan of this kind of democratization of the political process. That's what the book is about, a clash of worlds. I think that would be a good <laughs> subtitle. Garth, by the way, will be one of our special guests at the upcoming uh, HowStreet.com Money Expos, April 19th, Langley, British Columbia, again, May 2nd in Kelowna. Uh, you can sign up right on our front page here at HowStreet.com. Absolutely free, but you've got to do it quickly. Garth, it's always great to see you on the West Coast. Thanks for your time, and we we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much. Comments made on House Street Video and HowStreet.com are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at HowStreet.com. House Street Video is a production of House Street Media Incorporated.